My name is Robert Whites Carver. I live at 120 Trimbles, which is in Augusta County, Virginia. I'm a retired soil conservationist for the Department of Agriculture. In the last 26 years of that career was in Augusta County where I helped farmers improve water quality in streams and soil quality on their land. I'm currently on the education board of the Virginia League of Conservation Voters. I'm currently a private environmental consultant working with several organizations to restore watersheds. The proposed Atlantic Coast Pipeline if constructed will be the largest construction in Virginia since the interstates were built. And I can tell you that I have never seen a construction site even with all the erosion and sediment control measures in place that didn't have brown water leaving it after a rain. I've read the DEQ responses to our comments and I have many concerns. Foremost is what's the rush? There are too many unanswered questions, discrepancies and inconsistencies between state agencies and things that just don't add up. The proposed route that Dominion has submitted for the ACP leaves a lot to be desired. It goes through the widest and most active karst geology in the Commonwealth, through water recharge areas for public water supplies, through 11 farms with conservation easements on them, an elementary school is in the blast zone. All of this could have been avoided by using existing right-of-ways, but that's not why we're here. DEQ held a karst workshop for experts in June of this year. DEQ states in the report on that workshop that 40 of these experts were in agreement that the risk of a pipeline fracture is... My name is Robert Whites Carver. I live at 120 Trimble, which is in Augusta County, Virginia. I'm a retired soil conservationist for the Department of Agriculture. In the last 26 years of that career was in Augusta County where I helped farmers improve water quality in streams and soil quality on their land. I'm currently on the education board of the Virginia League of Conservation Voters. I'm currently a private environmental consultant working with several organizations to restore watersheds. The proposed Atlantic Coast Pipeline, if constructed, will be the largest construction in Virginia since the interstates were built. And I can tell you that I have never seen a construction site, even with all the erosion and sediment control measures in place, that didn't have brown water leaving it after a rain. I've read the DEQ responses to our comments and I have many concerns. Foremost is what's the rush? There are too many unanswered questions, discrepancies and inconsistencies between state agencies and things that just don't add up. The proposed route that Dominion has submitted for the ACP leaves a lot to be desired. It goes through the widest and most active karst geology in the Commonwealth, through water recharge areas for public water supplies, through 11 farms with conservation easements on them, an elementary school is in the blast zone. All of this could have been avoided by using existing right-of-ways, but that's not why we're here. 
DEQ held a karst workshop for experts in June of this year. DEQ states in the report on that workshop that 40 of these experts were in agreement that the risk of a pipeline fracture is not very high. They were also in agreement that large scale, I don't know what that means, large scale, interruptions of groundwater and surface water flow due to construction in karst were highly unlikely. The experts noted that it was difficult to envision how the proposed shallow trench, now in the report it says a shallow trench is, is uh, 10 to 12 feet deep, how that would have any significant effect on groundwater resources. Now when I read this, I, I was just in total disbelief and strongly disagree with these assessments. First of all, another agency in Virginia, the Division of Geology and Mineral Resources, disagrees. They report sinkholes regularly cause problems for transportation infrastructure in the Commonwealth. During the past 30 years, VDOT has recorded approximately 500 sinkholes that have damaged roads throughout the state. In 2001, a nine mile stretch of Interstate 81 in Augusta County was closed after the sudden appearance of three sinkholes. The report further states, groundwater contamination is a common problem in populated areas underlying karst terrain. Last year, VDOT shut down Interstate 81 again because of a sinkhole collapse. This occurs almost every year in Augusta County that roads close or a foundation cracks because of this active geology. If a foundation can crack, a pipeline can too. Years ago, I was called to the farm of Bo Wonderly in Mount Meridian. A sinkhole had opened up in his barnyard that you could drive a tractor trailer into. We could not see the bottom of it. DEQ experts say the risk of a pipeline fracture in karst is not very high. The DEQ report says that our comments about pipeline fractures in karst were based on hypothetical events which could occur. These hypothetical events do occur. Dominion hired a company to conduct a karst assessment and submit a report about it. The report states, blasting will be conducted in a manner that will not compromise the structural integrity or alter the karst hydrology of known inferred subsurface karst structures. How in the world can you say that? It's not possible to make a statement like that. I have a friend that had a spring that served their farm for over 200 years. When the power company blasted underground to build a transmission tower on their land, it fractured the underground water channels and dried up their spring. Their water disappeared. When somebody blasts in karst geology, it will affect groundwater channels. DEQ's requirement that Dominion only assess wells, springs, and other water supplies within a thousand feet of the proposed pipeline is woefully inadequate. In DEQ's letter to FERC, you state, and I quote, die traces within the general project area have shown connections of karst features to springs and wells as far away as seven miles. Shouldn't we have a more detailed report through karst? Discrepancies and inconsistencies exist between DEQ and many state agencies. The Division of Geology and Mineral Resources, which I just mentioned, the Virginia Department of Health, the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation, the Virginia Department of Game and Island Fisheries, all the elected officials in the affected counties in Western Virginia and most of the localities there. The city of Stanton, DEQ, the State Water Control Board, our elected officials, and Dominion to ask about doing a survey for one of their largest water supplies, Gardner Springs. 
And I heard the mayor, Carolyn Dole, speak before this board to ask the same questions. And to this day, not one agency, FERC, DEQ, or Dominion has responded to their concerns about the ACP going through their water resource, water recharge area. For a project of this magnitude, I would think that there should be no stone left unturned. Yet there are many. I heard our governor say, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. There are too many unanswered questions at this time, too many discrepancies and inconsistencies and things that just don't add up. I urge you to deny certification until we can get this right. Thank you. My name is Matt Yonka. I'm the president of the Virginia State Building Trades. I speak today on behalf of tens of thousands of men and union, union men and women that work in the building and construction trades throughout Virginia. A few are here today and you may hear from some of them later. This project is one way to get Virginia's economy back on top again and putting Virginians to work. We also understand that the ability of workers to make an honest living and providing for their families depends on businesses having the tools they need to grow and succeed, like access to more natural gas. To continue growing our economy, we need new energy infrastructure in place to support mount, uh, manufacturing and other industries that are creating the highly skilled and good paying jobs of the 21st century. The Atlantic Coast Pipeline of our General Assembly members, both Republican and Democrat, are 100% behind building this much needed infrastructure project. This project is personal for us too. Like many in this room, we live in the communities. I live in Chesapeake with my family, and I want good water too. The men and women, and the men and families that will be supported by this project also believe in doing these projects correctly as well. Their families will suffer like anyone else if it isn't done safely. The project, the job creates, the jobs created by this pipeline are Virginia jobs for Virginia workers. Pipeline construction is going to generate more than 8,000 jobs across the Commonwealth. These are good paying jobs for pipe fitters, carpenters, welders, equipment operators, the hardworking and patriotic folks who built our nation and made it what it is today. In addition to the economic benefits of the pipeline, there are important environmental benefits as well. The pipeline will bring our electric utilities to the energy they need to continue transitioning from coal to cleaner burning natural gas. That will significantly lower Virginia's carbon footprint and curb other presents a major step forward in the environmental and major improvements in the air quality in all our communities. I must add the men and women who work on, with me on these projects throughout Virginia and across the country, no dedication, hard work in getting projects done correctly the first time. You may hear from folks today who say that this project cannot be done safely. They're wrong. There are thousands of miles of pipeline that safely run throughout the region and over 400 that go I'll close by adding the lead federal permitting agency for the pipeline. My name is Allison Martin and I submitted a written comment in August. I urge you as the board responders and by extension our health and well-being to deny the proposed 401 certification for the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. An approval has to be founded on your having reasonable assurance that the pipeline will not violate and I'm deeply concerned that DEQ hasn't provided you with the necessary information or stipulations for you to confidently have that reasonable assurance. I don't believe DEQ has adequately addressed my and others' legitimate concerns and comments around some issues in this regard, and so I'm here to raise a few outstanding concerns with you this afternoon. First, individual analysis of stream and wetland crossings. Regarding DEQ's response that the general annual standards and specifications are sufficient for this analysis, it isn't possible for the board to have reasonable assurance that Virginia water quality standards won't be violated if information specific to this project, particularly in these ecologically sensitive and topographically challenging regions, is not very well analyzed and understood. While DEQ claims that pipeline incidents and regulations in other states aren't relevant, it's absolutely relevant that the same frameworks around construction and mitigation have demonstrated discrimination in three nearby states. 
This year, New York State denied the 401 certification for the Northern Access Pipeline, another large gas pipeline, stating, quote, even with stringent water quality protection conditions, violations of water quality standards occur, causing significant degradation of water quality in stream after stream along a constructed right-of-way. And we have seen devastation from the Rover Pipeline in Ohio and West Virginia faith effort in asking ACP for additional information four times in contrast to Virginia's demonstration of their interest in expediting approval. Perhaps most worrisome is the fundamental fact that the ACP hasn't outlined what water quality standards might be impacted nor how it will adhere to them. DEQ also hasn't provided any information on which water quality standards may be impacted by the ACP, which undermines from the get-go DEQ's purported reasonable assurance that they won't be violated. Furthermore, water down monitoring requirements, including three sample instead of continuous water quality monitoring, and the fact that the car sty tracing would be conducted after certification review are just a few examples of the DEQ prioritizing an expedited approval process. I urge the board to review the water quality standards outlined in pages 13 and 14 in the August 22nd letter from the Southern Environmental Law Center to DEQ. Thank you. I'm from William and Mary, so I have a greater breadth of love for the city um, because of just the close proximity to be able to be home all the time with my family. Um, first of all, I want to emphasize that along with many of us here, we stand for environmental justice, which includes the safety and the health of the most marginalized groups. Um, the ACP will be running just a few miles from where I live, so this is a particular concern, concern for me. First, this will happen in the first thing that will happen in the surrounding areas of the pipeline. The pipe down, the pipeline will drive down the value of the homes, making it harder for the residents to resell their properties if they need to in the short term. Um, the land will allow developers to buy large um, and lo large plots of land and log them for their profit and give no benefit to the community. This land clearing will allow for the development of new and higher priced housing. This will cause the existing home values to go up, which may sound like a good thing, but the higher rent and higher property taxes when you have a fixed income can make it unreasonable and unbearable uh, financial cost location. Suffolk having approximately 43% of the population being black, um, which make approximately $38,000 a year per family on average based on the 2016 census, which is only a little more than half than what an average white family makes in the United States, according to the same census, which is $63,000. Um, many of the people will be uh, who will be directly impacted will have their property taxes or rents increase, like I said, um, and a lot of these families that will be pushed out of the area are people who have been in the area for, like generations upon generations, such as my family, which has been in the area for over 150 years, first as slaves, then as sharecroppers, and now as residents of the city. And you can drive around Suffolk and see the plantations that my family most likely used to work on. Um, and used to share crop on. And these are going to be like, these are going to be developed. And this will cause people who have a deep connection to the land to be removed. The pipeline will affect many low income and black communities who live in Suffolk and like myself. Uh, you may not want to acknowledge the truth, but Virginia has been part of the United States historically violent legacy that continues to this day. From minority population, particularly black and indigenous Native American communities, Virginia and the United States, uh, Virginia, the United States, and wealthy corporations and their CEOs at large will not be in their position if it were not for the families that have benefited from the fact that of the enslavement of Africans. We built this, the pipeline is violence. We matter no matter what money or may or may not exist in our communities. You will not affirm the pipeline's value over us. Thank you. Paler, members of the board, DEQ staff, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Columbia Gas of Virginia, a growing natural gas service science while protecting our streams, rivers, and wetlands. Today, parts of our system are constrained by a lack of supply, and the ACP will help to relieve those bottlenecks. The Atlantic accessibility of domestically produced, economically priced, clean energy for our new customers and reliability for our existing customers and also increase Virginia's overall long-term energy supply. 
underground pipelines are without a doubt the safest and most environmentally friendly way of transporting energy. We support the requirements set out in DEQ's quality certification, which provides reasonable assurance that the acti activities it covers will be conducted in a manner that will not violate applicable water quality standards. By employing best in use of today's technology, the ACP has committed to meet or exceed all safety and environmental requirements. Nationally, almost 17,000 miles of natural gas pipelines have been in adding to the more than 1 million miles of existing infrastructure. Columbia Gas believes that sound-term, long-term energy policy must include application but that natural gas must remain an integral part to this plan. We strongly believe that the construction of the ACP will provide a number of tangible benefits, including increased access to clean natural gas, jobs and economic development to the citizens of Virginia, and to the customers of Columbia Gas of Virginia. Further, we are convinced, convinced that ACP can be constructed and operated in a manner that fully protects the Commonwealth's valuable water resources. Thank you very much. Activities. August 1969. Hurricane Camille battered the Gulf Coast. The storm cost more than 150 lives in Louisiana and Mississippi and caused widespread destruction. But after making landfall, Camille rapidly weakened as she moved north. From northern Mississippi to West Virginia, rainfalls of one to three inches were recorded. Then on August 19th, the weak storm system crossed the Appalachians. As the storm caught on the mountains, a weather phenomenon called orographic lift occurred. Orographic lift happens when an air mass is forced from a low elevation to a higher elevation. As the air mass rises, the relative humidity rises and massive amounts of precipitation can occur. That's the definition. Here's the reality of what happened in Augusta County and Nelson Counties that night. Listen to this description about Nelson County. As streams turned into muddy torrents, entire hillsides liquefied into fast-flowing sheets of mud. Soil, rock, boulders, stands of trees, and thickets and shrubs, all manner of creatures flowed down the mountain. These flows concentrated on, in hollows. Debris jams formed and then explosively gave way. Homes perished, roads disappeared, bridges were swept away, trillions of tons of water and soil and forest consolidated into invisible waves that effectively erased the face of the landscape. The liquid soil and mountain rock and flood water flowed through Davis Creek, the Ty, Rockfish Rivers, which converge into the James, headed east toward Richmond, thence into the Atlantic Ocean. The Peak River discharge, reconstructed by hydrographic anal analysis, was estimated at 36 million gallons per minute. A rare thousand-year storm, a once-in-a-lifetime event, hardly Mountains don't go away, so the possibility of a repeat event is always yeah, worry about it every time a new tropical depression pops up on the radar. When I was on the Augusta County Board of Supervisors, I joined and continued to participate in Project Impact, a commission administered under the Central Shenandoah Planning District. Project Impact is a FEMA-sponsored disaster mitigation and preparedness education program. We qualified for federal funding to launch Project Impact because we had experienced so many federally declared natural disasters, most of those from flooding events caused from orographic lift incident? Think again. Since 1969, we have had federal disaster declarations for floods in 72, 85, 92, 94, 95, 96, 98, and 2003. We are overdue. An accelerating climate change has made each summer's tropical storms more frequent and more intense. Who knows when Camille's record-breaking devastation will be topped, but the odds are that we will all be alive to witness it in the not-too-distant future. Think about what will happen when this Virginia and Virginia in terms of water quality issues in places where you now combine with an altered landscape now more vulnerable to the effects from heavy rainfall events. Yes, I'm talking about upland activities. The land will have been disturbed and reshuffled as the topsoil, rocks, trees are all removed from the very mountains that were scoured in Camille and other events. Only now you will have a 75 foot wide swath of hillside that no longer has tree roots in place to slow down the landslides and you will have created an actual 75 foot wide gutter for the water to roll through like a roller coaster. 
If you have time tonight, after a long day of listening to us speak, please Google images of pipeline breaks in flooding and look in horror at what Mother Nature can do to our infrastructure. If this project goes forward, you will be okaying the denuding of the terrain and the altering of the landscape. In, in Augusta County alone, Dominion will cross 189 streams and 43 wetlands. To build the ACP across the 12 foot deep trench, insert a 42 inch high pressure natural gas pipeline in the ground and cover it with just 36 inches of dirt. There will be less dirt on top of the pipe than the diameter of the pipe. Let me emphasize that despite reassurances from Dominion to EQT last week that they have 100 years worth of experience in building these pipelines, that is not the case. And the fact that there are hundreds of miles of natural gas pipelines underground in Virginia now in no way proves that those pipelines were constructed without adverse effects to water quality. I would ask that Dominion present to you and to us conclusive evidence that those pipes underground now did not harm water quality in the state when they were constructed. The truth is that no one has ever put a high pressure pipeline of this size in this type of mountainous, humid, forested terrain anywhere in the entire United States. No company, no place, ever. There's a reason for that. It can't be done safely, either in the construction or in the operation. Hurricane Sandy created 1,600 gas line breaks. Remember those horrifying images of neighborhoods on fire immediately after Hurricane Sandy? Gas line breaks from the flooding were the cause. Bottom line is that there are many reasons why this pipeline certification should not be granted. I only have to say one word, karst. That Swiss cheese beneath our feet is a maze of cracks, caves, and crevices from which our water and your water emerge. Dominion has very little, evidence, uh, very little experience working in karst. They have proposed building a pipeline on top of existing sinkholes, and they have bragged that this is not a problem. In Augusta County, near the proposed pipeline route, we recently had a sinkhole open up under one of Dominion's underground power lines. Do you think Dominion jumped on the opportunity to show how they could repair a sinkhole? Not exactly. They moved their power line because they thought the ground was too unstable. And then they sent a letter to the landowners saying that they did not cause the sinkhole so they would not fix it. But for safety reasons, the landowner should go get the sinkhole fixed. What would Dominion do if a sinkhole opened up under their natural gas pipeline? Because they don't have any experience with pipelines. You know, Dominion borrowed their sinkhole mitigation plan in their EIS from the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection and the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Perhaps in their haste to cut and paste, they did not read the whole thing on the NRCS plan. <laughs> This is verbatim from that plan that is in their EIS for how they're going to repair sinkholes on the pipeline. This practice does not apply to erosional or collapse features caused by failure or leakage of underground pipes or construction surface drainage or due to piping or unstable soil materials. This practice does not apply to sinkholes that may appear in or beneath structures. So the plan that they say will be used to fix sinkholes does not even apply to sinkholes that open up under pipes. We who live with this Swiss cheese beneath our feet fear the consequences of what will happen if this project becomes a reality. In Karst, private water sources are ruined or are altered all the time by things that happen close by and far away. It is not only the digging of a 12-foot trench that could alter the flow or the purity of a well or a spring, it is also the blasting through our limestone. Here are true stories about living in Karst. My neighbor's shower turned to mud one day. The cause was tracked down to a mile away where another neighbor had to blast some rock to install a septic tank. A family in Churchville lost their water supply when VDOT fixed a dangerous curve in the road. When I-81 was built, numerous people lost their wells and springs. Why? Because of the grading and the blasting. Dominion plans to bore under I-81 at Mint Spring in the exact area that closes every year because of sinkholes that open up on the interstate. This is also the location of an incredible double cave system called Cochrane's Cave, where globally rare species are found and where much of the water from that area emanates. The Department of Conservation and Recreation is very worried that construction will impact that unique cave system. The city of Stanton is worried that the pipeline route that goes through their recharge area will affect their largest water supply. Dealing with karst is always a gamble. We don't know what will be affected or how much water will be contaminated or altered. That's what we don't know. What we do know is that there will be severe impacts to water and the associated habitats. It is not a gamble that Virginians should be willing to take. Please deny this certification. Cowpasture River Preservation Association. 
um, and my friends and family in Bath, Highland, Allegheny counties, all of Virginia and surrounding states. That's our membership. While my organization focuses on just one watershed, you are the guardians of all the watersheds in Virginia. Today, people enjoy a precious resource that is unmatched almost anywhere. We have the Cowpasture River that has been correctly classed by the Virginia DEQ in places as a Tier 3 river. This is the highest quality that can be measured, and we measure been monitoring the water quality for generations, but my role here today is not to speak about science. I want to speak about what this unique is. First and most obvious, it's the source of our drinking water. The Cowpasture and Jackson watersheds are the lifeblood of the communities along them. Cowpasture surface and groundwater serve the needs of thousands of Virginia residents all the way down here to Richmond. These become the James River. This is not one of many sources, this is one of one. Second and equally obvious is the economic value of our rivers. Tourism is the single largest category of economic activity in the Allegheny Highlands. It drives literally everything. Employment, land and home values, taxes, retail, you name it. And like the rivers, tourism revenue too is irreplaceable. Third is recreation. I won't take up too much time with my personal fishing stories, but I'm not alone in my love of that. The watershed serves fish and game alike. If you've never had the opportunity to stand in our pristine river with a fishing rod in one hand, watching the nature around you, you're missing out on a connection to nature that too is irreplaceable has been working for 45 years to preserve this irreplaceable watershed for coming generations. Never has that threat been so eminent. As recent as last month, the builders of the proposed Atlantic Coast Pipeline have been unwilling or unable to produce site-specific plans for how and where they intend to cross it. As unbelievable as this is for us, it should be even more troubling for you, the guardians of our state water resources. Because of this and their lack of clear plans for high hazard areas, we implore you to turn down their request for a water certification permit. Send them back to the drawing board. Thank you. I'm a member of the Virginia State Bar, and I'm the Virginia Program Manager for the nonprofit organization Appalachian Voices. I spoke to you last uh, last Wednesday. It's good to see you again. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of the board members sitting up there on the stage uh, for your public service, uh, and thank you for your time that you devote to protecting the waters of Virginia. Now, DEQ's summary package states that this draft certification is one of quote multiple and that the agency is offering this certification as an additional protection for upland activities that could impact water quality. Please do not accept this narrative. If you look carefully at the language in the draft certification, it says that the nationwide permit 12 and this draft certification for land disturbing activities in upland areas together constitute the 401 certification for the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. So the real story here is that DEQ is asking you to certify the entire Atlantic Coast project without providing the necessary technical and scientific information required of you to make that decision. There are both procedural and substantive issues with this. Procedurally, this is a problem because DEQ arbitrarily limited the scope of comments saying that the public may not comment on the Nationwide 12 permit and whether or not the ACP qualifies for coverage under it. The agency also precluded comments on other critical layers of water quality protection, such as ENS plans and the stormwater management plans, which have yet to be completed. Substantively, certifying the entire project under Nationwide 12 and this upland certification is a problem because on the one hand, you have Nationwide 12, which is clearly insufficient to deal with the water crossings for a project of this magnitude. And on the other hand, you have a draft certification that expressly does not deal with in-stream impacts. Let's talk a little bit more about Nationwide 12. 
When the Army Corps of Engineers issued the nationwide permits earlier this year, it published a decision document explaining that, quote, nationwide permits are a type of general permit designed to authorize certain activities that have no more than minimal individual and cumulative adverse environmental effects and generally comply with the related laws cited in 33 CFR 320.3. Activities that result in more than minimal individual and cumulative adverse environmental effects cannot be authorized by NWPs, end quote. Now, folks, the Atlantic Coast Pipeline is one of the largest pipelines ever to be proposed in Virginia. It is anticipated to have significant adverse impacts to Virginia's waters. This type of project should require an individual permit based on project-specific analysis. that nationwide permits cannot stand in the place of a Clean Water Act Section 401 certification where such certification is required. So incredibly, DEQ not, now offers as a Section 401 certificate two documents. One, a document that expressly does not satisfy Section 401 requirements, that's the Nationwide 12, and two, this draft certification for upland activities which does not deal with direct impacts to water quality. DEQ's response to my comments was to defer. DEQ said that Nationwide 12, as certified, is generally protective of water quality for streams and wetlands. DEQ also replied in its summary that ultimately, quote, the Corps will determine if the project qualifies for a nationwide permit or whether an individual permit must be drafted, end quote. The problem here, of course, is that Nationwide 12 is the only part of the draft certification that deals with in-stream construction activities. If you approve the draft certification as written, you would be allowing the Corps to decide for you whether the ACP requires a project-specific permit or can be covered under the Nationwide 12. Yet it is your duty, this board's duty, and authority to use Section 401 of the Clean Water Act to protect Virginia waters. The Corps simply does not have that power. There's other critical information um, that you're missing in order to make this decision. Um, on ENS and stormwater, I asked DEQ not to separate the ENS uh, control plans and stormwater management plans from this water quality certification, uh, mainly because sedimentation is likely to be the biggest source of water pollution for this project. Uh, DEQ responded, quote, project-specific stormwater management and erosion and sediment control plans are a critical component of assuring protection of water quality, but this is a separate, but this is separate and apart from the scope of this proposed 401. This is an unacceptable response, again leaving out highly, qual highly relevant information for your decision. Um, we need an evaluation of total sediment loads expected to be added to state waters. DEQ is asking you to certify this project while failing to include information about water quality that DEQ itself admits is a critical component. Uh, I also asked DEQ to analyze each individual stream and wetland crossing in order to gather pertinent data at specific sites so that impacts to water quality could be better understood before this board makes its decision. Uh, DEQ responded that compliance with the annual standards and spec generally is sufficient to satisfy Tier 2 and Tier 3 anti-degradation requirements because the controls will not result in a lowering of water quality, making individualized Tier 2 or Tier 3 review unnecessary. This is an unacceptable response. The response ignores the need for data regarding individual stream and wetland crossings. The annual standards and specifications document is not an anti-degradation review. It is also likely that issuing a 401 certification without an anti-degradation review is inconsistent with federal law. Let's talk about karst. I commented that the karst dye tracing studies should be completed before certification, not just before construction. Last week about how the, the dye tracing studies are now done. Uh, we the public hasn't seen them. Uh, that was for MVP. I haven't heard that yet about ACP. Um, so while DEQ has added a requirement in the revised permit uh, for a supplemental in karst terrain, uh, this information should be provided to you, the board, prior to certification, not next month. The board cannot find reasonable assurance that the ACP will not violate water quality standards without having data relevant to the anticipated impacts of trenching and blasting in highly sensitive karst terrain. At the end of the day, DEQ and the applicant are asking you to certify the Atlantic Coast Pipeline without highly relevant information. But you do have the authority to insist on making an informed decision. 
Recently, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit upheld New York's decision to deny water quality certification for an interstate pipeline where the agency asked for and did not receive critical data on water quality impacts. See, there's a few lawyers up here, so the site for that is Constitution Pipeline Co. versus New York State Department of Environmental by the Second Circuit on August 18th, 2017. In that case, the court also quoted with approval the Tenth Circuit, which said that, quote, an agency is arbitrary and capricious for issuing a permit with insufficient information, end quote. With our review of specific stream crossings, baseline data and analysis of expected sediment additions, and a full knowledge of the impacts on private drinking water wells, it is impossible for this board to know whether there is a reasonable assurance that water quality standards will not be violated. Therefore, you should deny the draft certification. See, I've got a little bit of time left. Um, I, I wanted to say that I really appreciate the efforts this board made last week to reserve some authority to review water crossings in the future in regards to the MVP. I, I do have some concerns that the language added to that certification does not go far enough in preserving that authority for yourselves. Um, I'm also concerned um, that as, as approved last Thursday, um, that certification with the modifications will be perceived generally as a total project certification under 401, regardless of the authority that you attempted to preserve for yourselves. Um, therefore, I think the best option here is for you to deny this application. Thank you. This project has not been lacking in extensive review. Despite claims to the contrary, this project review from multiple agencies at different levels of government with varying areas of expertise, all who have deemed this project can be built safely without, can be safely built while mitigating impacts on the environment and protecting our water resources. This includes U.S. Forest Service, which recently granted approval for the, the project to cross two natural forests. Several rounds of hearings have been held on, on the components along the route, and multiple delays have already occurred. These delays have, al these delays have allowed for appropriate input from coordinating agencies such as DEQ and have given landowners and local residents multiple opportunities to give their comments on the project. It would be naive of me and any supporter of this to ignore that this project is not a massive undertaking, thorough review, and appropriate planning. Supporters love this state and our homes just as much as the opponents. We support this project, however, because we know it can be done safely. It, can, it will be reviewed thoroughly by state agencies and must meet strict standards. Pipelines that have existed for decades were not required to conform to. Modern day standards will ensure this pipeline produces promised benefits without the harmful side effects opponents claim it will cause. And I am confident DEQ will appropriately manage this project so our water resources are protected. This 401 certificate far exceeds the standard requirements of this agency and are far more adequate to protect bodies of water from possible runoff in upland areas. As you listen today and make a decision on this certificate, please take into account the facts of this project. I am confident you will find no reason to delay issuing the appropriate permits for this project to proceed. Thank you.